the last one to be decided. Mm. Right. Well, this debate hasn't included one essential element, and that's looking at the alternative choice that belief in God is totally man-made. Hans Isaac, how do you view that? Well, as an atheist, of course, I can't believe that God created man. I think my well, parents had not. something to do with it. <laughs> um, I, I have a distinct feeling that we're taking too provincial a view of the terms God and religion. We think of it in terms of dear old pink Church of England. Uh, but of course, that is only one uh, very small aspect of religion. Uh, both Torquemada and St. Francis of Assisi uh, were religious and had a, an image of God, but they were very different images of God, one from the other. The Ayatollah Khomeini and uh, Bishop Montefiore, I'm sure, have quite different gods uh, in mind uh, when they think about religion. Even the Jehovah of the Old Testament is very different to the kind of God that the bishop uh, is talking about. So I think it's very important to realize that if man creates God in his image, as I'm sure he does, mm. he has many different needs and consequently creates many different types of God. Can you, can you define that a bit more closely? What are you actually, what are you actually saying? I mean, I can see Hugh Montefiore blenching, but can you actually ex simplify that a little for our audience? Well, if your personality is warlike, uh, wants to proselytize, is aggressive and so on, then you go for the kind of God that the Koran portrays, which wants to proselytize the world uh, and is warlike uh, and so on. If you are peace-loving, you want to have an assurance of a future life and so on and happiness, then perhaps you adopt the kind of God portrayed by, by the Ahmed Church Ahmed did you agree with that? I don't, ma'am. You see, uh, I don't think that our brother has read the Quran. The way it seems. You see, there are 99 attributes of God, and out of that, this one that you are talking about is non existent in this book. Can I ask you a question? Are you saying then that the Muslim God is actually a peace loving God who wants peace in the world? Yes, yes. And he tells us that if, if somebody wars against you, you have a right to fight back, unlike turning the other cheek. What about it, the concept of the holy war, the jihad? Yes, that is a struggle for righteousness. For example, Britain, when she was under attack by Hitler, what you did was jihad. And we take our hat to you, to Vincent Churchill, for you know, putting the spirit into your people. Now that is what is this, a defensive war. And you had to retaliate. Because if you didn't, if you just sat back, you know, keeping Hitler at, at bay, it wouldn't have served the purpose, you have to attack. And in the state of nature, everyone has a right to do that. So Islam allows us to defend ourselves and to extend our hostilities to a reasonable amount of uh, satisfaction and retaliation. All right, can I come back?